Hello everyone, Helen here and welcome to my channel. Today I will be making 12 cards using the July 2022 sheet load of cards by Call Me Crafty Al. I brought in two stamp sets from Stampin' Up! which are called Penguin Palace and Oh What Fun. I also brought in a Santa's Workshop DSP by Stampin' Up! as well and a die set from Stampin' Up! which is called Stitched So Sweetly. Here's how it looks like. It has a nice stitched border around it. I thought it would be uh, really cute to put on this card. And here are my pattern papers that I've gone ahead and die cut as well as the mats. And here's my uh, background. And the snowflakes from that pattern paper is actually uh, has a texture of kind of like a velvet and then I'm also bringing in a ribbon and I'll show you how I tied that but here's how it looks like but I will demonstrate how I tied my ribbon later on and then two ink pads from Stampin' Up! which are real red and garden green so the sentiment I chose is happy Christmas and then that one is from the oh what fun stamp set and the bottom one is it says to the coolest friend ever and that's from the penguin place uh stamp set and um, i like it because my uh, pattern paper on the background are snowmen so i thought it would be very fitting to uh include that um, at first i was just going to keep it at happy christmas but then i felt like it just looked a little too plain so um, one of the things I like to do when I'm stamping sentiments is I like to incorporate multiple stamp sets. So if I have like a big text, I would like to incorporate like a smaller text at the bottom. It just looks really, uh, I don't know, I just it looks really nice that way to me. And um, I really like how both colors complemented each other. And these colors actually go together because of the color palette of the pattern paper I chose. So for the most part, I did um, kind of make my made my own, um, I guess you could say card kit here because um, this pattern paper that I have, it's called Santa's Workshop. Um, these are just uh, sc mostly scraps, I would say. Maybe I had like four sheets, full sheets of 12 by 12s. But for the most part, the squares that I cut out were like um, left over from previous projects. And um, I wanted to come back to that because um, I'm on a mission, you guys. I am on a mission to smash as many used pattern papers I have here so I have two more sheets left from this pack which I will um, more than likely uh, finish off sometime this week so then I can uh, make room for more paper this year later on you know because I love shopping during Black Friday because usually that's like a really uh, good time to uh I guess buy stuff because of all the sales and so I try to um, refrain from buying too many papers because I, I like you know holiday shopping so okay so I matting my pattern papers with a garden green cardstock from Stampin' Up. Um, I guess I could have matted it red too but I kind of wanted it to be different um, and not use such bold color colors and I thought it would match really great with um, you know the green from the trees and the scarf of the snowman so here I am using a candy cane pattern paper and a kind of like a dotted line um, pattern paper um, I also thought about matting this one with a red cardstock because um, of the green on green but then if I matted it with the red it would be red on red with the candy cane so I opted to use the green just so I can tie in the mat from my snowman pattern paper and um, I did tweak this sketch just just uh, I did tweak this sketch just a little bit um, because in the 
in the sketch it says to cut the mat to let me see here three three point three seven five by three point three seven five and I just did three and one eighths by three and one eighths because the pattern paper squares are three by three and then you cut it in half so um if you had cut it 3.375 then you would have a you know you would have the border all around and then you will have another border in between the two pattern papers um, but I just decided um, to just put the pattern papers together and the other thing I did was I instead of using an oval I decided to use um, my dies here which are called Stitched So Sweetly, also from Stampin' Up. So as I was um, mentioning earlier, I um, tried to make my own card kit here um, where I incorporated um, my, my pattern paper, um, stamp sets, and they don't really match, but, you know, it's, it's easy to match sentiments instead of, like, images for me. So, um... I just matched the two sentiments together and then I brought in of course this die and then I brought in a ribbon to embellish my my cards and I'm um, I was really happy with how it turned out you instead of putting the ribbon too you can probably put like a snowman but we'll talk about that later once we get to the uh, ribbon part so I was really enjoying uh, putting my cards together while I was watching um, my favorite YouTubers um, and um, it was just so relaxing. I love um, making a um, sheet load of cards and I guess while I'm assembling this I should talk about um, the sheet load of cards. This is a sketch that Alicia from Call Me Crafty Al she makes this uh, she makes sketches once a month and then it's absolutely free and the only thing she asks is that you be a subscriber to her channel and if you're interested in ob obtaining this sketch I will le leave her channel link down below where she talks about the sheet load of cards and from there she will instruct you on how you can download it so since it's Christmas in July I wanted to create or get a head start on some of the cards that I will be donating uh, to the Cards for Soldiers. Um, every year they collect cards for the soldiers overseas and I try to pledge uh, a box of cards to them and I think for the box that I pick up from my post office it fits about 400 cards and that's how much I usually pledge and so I thought it would be great to get a head start in creating the the cards that I'll be donating and um, Alicia's sketches are actually really perfect for creating mass-produced cards and um, so I'll be using a lot of her sketches when I'm um, creating cards for the donation that I'll be putting together and then maybe when I fill up the box I can show you guys what it looks like um, and all the cards I create maybe I'll create a little series here on YouTube um, I think deadline to donate to to that cause um, I think it's around November or early December so then they can get that out to them um, on time Okay, so here I cut out some of my uh, scraps, um, two of two card stocks actually, um, and I glued it on top of each other because of the the pattern paper and the card stock, the square one. Okay, I'm like losing my train of thought. I'm sorry, you guys. And plus, my daughter in the background is like super distracting me. <laughs> And she keeps talking. I'm like, oh my gosh. And I really don't want to go back and re-edit this voiceover. So I hope you guys don't mind that that I'm kind of like all over the place here. But okay, let's keep going. We can do this, guys, because we're almost done. 
Okay, so like I said, I was putting, I mean, I am putting um, these two cardstocks behind my sentiment here just so it wouldn't dip down because I do have, you know, the square, I have like the mat and the pattern paper. So if I didn't put those scraps of paper behind my sentiment, it would like really look kind of bad. It would be dipped down. Now I don't do this for all my cards, um, but if I notice a considerable difference in um, height of the card, then I will take my time to add scraps of cardstock behind the paper or cardstock that needs it, um, just so it would look aesthetically pleasing. And yeah, so, and also, you know, I really, want to take pride in my work and especially if I'm donating this you know I just want it to look really presentable so that's why I you know I like to take the time to give um extra touches to the cards that I make all right so we're down to the last sentiment here and then pretty soon we'll be adding these to the card bases. So let me know in the comment section below um, if you make handmade cards to send to family, friends, or loved ones. Um, I, lo I love making my handmade cards for my friends and family. Um, also, let me know in the comment section below if you make the same cards for your friends and family. I used to make the same cards, like mass-produced cards, that are the same for my friends and family, but now I find that I like making um, different cards. I mean, like I'll like the amount of cards I send is probably around fifty, a little bit over fifty. So I'll make ten of the same cards, but like for my crafty friends, I'll make separate cards because you know crafty friends, right? You know you have to make them. Uh, I'm not saying like special cards, but like, you know, the attention to detail has to be impeccable. Just say. <laughs> so let me know in the comment section below if you make a lot of cards or if you make different cards for different people, if you make the same cards, you know, just curious. Also, um, if you haven't already done so, you can sign up for my happy mail list, um, which I always have in my description below. You can be anywhere in the world. I love sending out happy mail just to put smiles on your faces and surprise you. Um, I have gotten a couple um, happy mails, like surprise happy mails from some of my viewers. And let me tell you, it just really makes my day. And I love the handwritten messages in there that you right it like yesterday I got like this uh, card from one of my viewers unexpectedly and you know the message that they wrote was just you know it really made me feel good and um, it makes me feel like what I'm doing here is I guess you know worth it you know because I'm inspiring others to craft and so thank you to those who have sent happy mail to me. Um, it really does make my day. And um, yeah, so I just, you know, as a thank you to you guys who watch me and have supported me, um, feel free to sign up to my happy mail list. And you just never know when you're going to get a card. But, you know, I just... I just love sending happy mail. It makes me happy to um, give back to you guys. All right. So let me tell you guys. I don't know if glue dots change the way they put their glue dots on the sheet there or on that roll. Because it used to be not on the back of the roll. It used to be on the front of the roll. Does that make sense? And I'm just like having the hardest time sticking the glue dots on my ribbon. And then like the first ribbon I put, I thought I could get away with one, but I had to put two more. So I put a total of three just so I, I know that it's secure and that it wouldn't um, rip off. But I think they changed the way like where the glue dots are placed now. So I wish it was on the heavier side, if that makes any sense, and not on the thinner side, because it's harder for me to push on it. 
so so I took out like one of my tools there that one is actually from Stampin Up and it's a great tool because on one side it has the sticky part for sequins um, but the other side it it's an interchangeable tool and I ha I've had this for over two or three years now because I forgot when it came out but one side has like a spatula thing and then the other side has like this pointy needle thing so you can push out like intricate dies and the other side can pick up sequins or sticky enamel dots so yeah it's a great tool all right guys we're done here um wow i like talked through this whole thing i didn't think i would but here it is the finished product let me know what you guys think um thank you guys so much for watching and i hope you have a great rest of the week have a wonderful day guys bye